okay, great, there's something happening, good. Mm. Like, tell me, show me the poster, it's right there. And it's, I feel like that is actually like, especially in the past few months, that's how you know about stuff. Yeah. A lot of the rest of the world other than here is obviously in lockdown, including a lot of my close family, friends, da 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 la in England. Um, in terms of the, the question about live theatre, is live theatre, or not, not just theatre, gigs, anything live, performance, art, etc. I don't think it's going to die. People are like, it's the end. I'm like, it's not the end. Mm. Um, of course it's not the end. <laughs> I think... Yeah, Umbrella, no, it's not the end. That will continue. And I think that technology will continue to just springboard off into whatever that whatever on earth it's doing and they'll they'll come inside and keep combining um and hopefully really push each other on um i feel like the i am a bit of an optimist but um the 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 huge sad thing is that this is that right now there's a lot of people who are really missing going out really they're very lonely mm. they're feeling very <clears throat> disconnected they're really sick of looking at digital screens and knowing that that thing that they worked really hard on isn't really working because i don't know someone's probably brushing their teeth watching it or you know like the sound's bad or whatever um and they're desperate to go out and give people a hug and sit there with a glass of wine and just like Ha have a laugh about something and enjoy yeah. something in a room together hmm. and I think that that will only fuel that hunger this situation it's like oh thank god we can go out so I think there will be an appetite again I hope that there's support I hope that they're still alive because there's been a huge stranglehold on the arts hmm. um especially in my neck of the woods um and I think it's hugely hugely important that we we, we recognise that we need the arts. It's not frivolous. No. It's a thing pushing humanity forward. It always has been. Yeah, we need it. And so What is the world without the arts? It's oh. lawyers and fast food. Which we need. Well, maybe we, not the fast food, but like... We don't, I don't know about the lawyers either. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, maybe. Some people need a lawyer, I reckon. Hi. Hi. I'm Hester. I'm Tom. Nice to meet you. And you. Wonderful. <laughs> How did um, you get dragged along into this? Um, I got asked um, to, yeah, to, to, to talk on a podcast by Marion. And um, it's because I'm, uh, I'm, I, I trained as an actress. Um, and then in the past few years, I've been making more of my own work in writing and um, sort of self-performed plays and, and poetry and um, things like that. Okay. So it's kind of merged into a different space, which I find, I, I really like it. Yeah. How about you? I checked my emails accidentally. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and found an email from Marion, who I've known for about seven years on and off, uh -huh. due to her being kind of closely associated with my parents um, who run a food business mm -hmm. um, and I've just done kind of work with her at the theatre doing bar work and most recently I had to go up to Wellington with her and uh, kind of perform as a prop in an artwork. Ah, oh, that sounds good. Graham Bennett who was doing, if you know Graham Bennett, he's a kind don't. of Christchurch sculptor who's been, I suppose, doing work for the last a hundred years, but maybe sixty years. We don't know how old he is. It's just been doing work for a long, <laughs> I was long just time. Like, oh my god! No, no, he's, he's just, like, yeah. And that was to do with some three D photography. So he knows Marion from working with the Free Theatre as well, doing prop, yeah. prop work and set design. Um, what prop were yeah. you? I was myself. Oh. I was myself. I was my um, naked body that was a. Uh, in a 3D photography booth, which this guy has set up in Wellington, where he takes it around kind of comic cons and things of that nature, mm -hmm. and people pay to get their 3D photo. Oh my god! Which gosh. then can be shipped off to 
I think it was Canada. The file was shipped off to Canada and is then turned into a kind of 3D replica of yourself, which Graham then incorporated into an artwork, um, which was pretty awesome. Mm. So we kind of connected heavily up there and we had some long chats over beers. And I Do suppose you thought I had a... mini-me somewhere then? Yeah, in the Christchurch Art Gallery at the moment. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, there you go. Along with uh, 12 other people, which is super interesting. I hope that it's not like a night of the museum thing where they come alive and start doing odd things. Well, I can even might. know. They might, yeah. They might. You've they kind might. of... Because it's like there's like that photograph idea is that if you could take a photograph of yourself, it's like part of your soul. Mm. So I don't know what happens with a 3D body image. Like, oh, I hope I'm out. safe. I hope I don't get the police knocking at my door. Yeah. 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 Mm. Cool. You don't want to be provocative. You don't want to get on your these nerves. You just want to do the your assigned place in life mm. um, and in acting is that what you want to see just the because there's a deepness in that as well there's the individual coming forth into an existence of of hardship and of want but also not wanting to go too far i think yeah i think yeah but also not necessarily just those characters i mean yes those characters though um but just um the way I put it at the time was a less stereotypical view of a person from the North. It was very North focused at the time because that's where I was writing. That's what I had. That's the story I then had to get out of my head. Okay. Um, whereas recently, it's been more of a kind of. I had this thing. So at school, I used to always be the one who had my hand in the air. You know, I was always the one. My parents were teachers. I was always like doing my own. Oh my project, stuff like that. I just like making stuff, you know? Mm. And there was a point, I remember it was like maybe college, and then I was like, why is no one putting their hand in the air? Oh my God. And I realized I was the only, often one of the only ones. And then I realized a few years after that, I was still really afraid of putting my hand in the air and saying, I'll do something. Right. I'll, I'll give my voice. I'll add to this pile. And the people who always would were people that you always hear in mm. terms of like the demographic of the people you'd expect to be the writers, the makers, the whatever. Yeah. It's like, if you're not going to put your hand in the air, don't complain. That's no, what sometimes... Yeah. I, so I feel like... I mean, it's the thing recently with voting. Yeah, yeah. just add your voice in. Yeah. And if you think you should be, do it. Otherwise, shut up. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, well, I mean, it comes into terms of people... It's a lot of things that go ahead. I mean, someone might be too anxious. Exactly. exactly or yeah. not just anxious, but yeah. someone might feel that their opinion, though is good for themselves, isn't worth hearing for other people. Yeah, and um, that's true. And that's mm. why I was like, what is my problem? I'm just afraid. Right. So if I'm afraid, if it's because I'm, I'm afraid people will think I'm crap, I can deal with that. Yeah, exactly. You know? That's their thoughts not yeah. your own yeah because maybe as well because actually I, I do need like I'm so, my mental health is massively better since I started making my own work okay. I feel like I'm making other people's lives better mm. <laughs> which is everyone. wonderful yeah but like maybe like the husband <clears throat> who's been dragged along and just wanted to stay I'm sure he sounds footy. something from, but yeah, yeah maybe there's something going yeah some difference and that's what I just want to keep doing outward. it feels it feels good and if that has mm. to be on a digital platform or a theatre, live platform, whatever. Yeah. The good thing about the digital is that it will reach them, but I think, I suppose my point is, maybe to finish that bit of wobble for me, is like, if you're gonna do that, please give it. Um, don't just think you can flippantly, oh yeah, we'll just record it, because it actually hurts the art. Right. You have to have a specific reason. You have to know mm. what, what, whether if it's gonna be this is a live performance that we've recorded snippets of. That's sort of better, I think, than, oh, I don't know. It, I feel like you, it's better to do like a tailor-made version not, for digital yeah. or live. You don't want to replace, do you? No. Replace. Replacement seems like it's, um, or necessarily replace because there's nothing else to put your work on. I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't consider myself an artist and I don't know, only for the purpose, because I, I don't know what that means. I think it's such an ambiguous thing to call oneself um, because it's, 
everybody's got their own take on it. Um, but to put something online with the, yeah, without kind of giving it full attention for the only reason to get your stuff out there, I don't think is, yeah, I don't think is worthy. I recently made a film over lockdown, which is, became a 25 minute long poem, um, metaphorical about rooms in a house. And it kind of was about the end of a relationship. Um, and it had uh, music behind it, original music by a local Christchurch artist um, called Anita Clark. Anyway, I made a film of that, um, but it, it's also possible to perform the poem live. Okay. But what I'd say is like, digitally, perform digitally performing that was an, an amazing experience because it was the first opportunity I got to make a film. Um, and I'm, I'm a very visual person, so I could see. I, I mean, it was very natural to make a house and, and to see uh, what I wanted to do because my, my words are generally very, very descriptive and very visually, um, the, the springboard is usually visual. So um, it wasn't hard for me to make a film and I really loved um, being a control freak about it. I loved kind of <laughs> being able to give each moment um, a kind of, uh, a, a focus that it deserved. So you had the time to yeah. be the director, the actor, yeah. the writer, and to have a cup of tea when you wanted. It yeah. wasn't just all at once for, for the audience, right? But I suppose if it was during the lockdown and during this whole coronavirus, Shazam, you had honest time for yourself for this thing. Yeah. So there wasn't all of, right, there wasn't anything but no. you and was there a push to do something for yourself because of the lockdown? It was actually a commission, oh, was which I was very, okay. very grateful for because okay. I thought it was going Wonderful. crazy. Yeah, I can imagine. Um, <laughs> like a lot of people. Yeah. But what I'd say is in terms of the making of it, it was great to make it because yeah, because of the crazy thing, but also to, to just make something. I think when I, when you're making, when you're in a weird place, sometimes mm. the best kind of work comes out. Yeah, yeah. Um, mm. Cause it's like, you really have to, you're trying to explain something or trying to understand something mm. and therefore it's kind of got a purpose or it takes on a life of its own through. due to this thing on the side, right? Yeah. Mm. Um, but making, making a film, and also feeling at the time, I thought it was incredibly vulnerable, but actually since people are like, oh, I didn't even know, really? Mm. No, I don't know. And I'm like, oh. So that was a good lesson. Mm. Um, it, was the, it was the making it in a, in a certain time and place and then having people watch it, that's kind of weird. Right. So like I played it the other night in front of a semi-invited audience, but kind of quite public and I was more nervous about doing that than I was about doing any poetry or any theatre because right. I had to sit there and watch it and yeah. I couldn't be right. using that energy or, mm. you know. Mm. It was removed from what it was, what, intentionally for? Or it was, no, no, it was, it was used for what it was intentionally it for? It was always going to be you, yeah. Yeah, it was always going to be there for an audience. Mm. But um, that brought it very close to home. Was it odd doing something that was so, uh, I don't know if it was personal, but it sounds semi-personal because of the time and place. Yeah. And then putting it on a platform where it kind of could be anywhere at any time. Did you ever consider that the internet is a thing? I kind of like, like that. that. Yeah. I think that's why, I, that's why I quite painstakingly wanted it to be, I didn't mind it being not perfect, but I wanted it to be something I was proud of. Yeah. And when I, but the thing is, that's why I think I needed to use something truthful because mm. that's the space I was in at the time. I was going, I felt like, I think everybody was in lockdown. For Everything was turned up to a hundred. Yeah. For whatever got, was going on in people's situations. And I felt like I could only use something really truthful. I don't think I would have usually done that. So it was actually quite, 
quite good for me mm. as, a, as a maker. Mm. Yeah. I find with Instagram it just is too, uh, as the technology is now, is quite uh, assaulting on what you're doing currently. So, I mean, I don't have an Instagram, but if I did have one, I'd be putting photos of what I'm doing out. But I'd be getting so much of other people's things that I, I wouldn't feel a part of, and I'd possibly feel removed from that. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about people looking at your stuff on Instagram? Do you, only, do you kind of censor yourself? I have two accounts. <laughs> I have two accounts, one's really recent. And I realised it was for so I I love taking pictures. Okay. Um. So I was taking photos. I I love it as basically it's become my own album of things that I want to remember and things I look. I think God that looks beautiful or mm. look at that you know. Yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, I'll take a picture. I'll upload it. Um. I don't mind people looking because yes. it's almost like, look at this beautiful thing. Strike me as the kind of person that's not concerned with likes. No, I don't give a no, damn. No, again, yeah. Um, although you do fall into the trap of being like, why does everyone like that one? But yeah. also being like, whatever. Just um, no trap. Yeah, but I real so I realised sometimes I start I started uploading poetry up there okay. because again, for me it was a way of going, don't be precious. You think this thing, get it out. I think that's because I'm that kind of person too. But like you said before, possibly my someone might see it and it'll help. Possibly. Right? Yeah. Um, I don't know, maybe there's another reason. Maybe it's me going, hear me. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, look at but, this. Um, mm. I realised recently, yeah, I should have, an, have another account for people that might not always want to read poems. Or maybe they want to read my poems. And maybe yeah. I should give that more... Maybe I should... Uh, honour myself more and the writing I do by saying, yes, I write things, here's an account for it. Okay. Because I feel like if, yes, yeah, so now I have a poetry account as well. Cool. And that's just basically just poems. Yeah. yeah. That's it. I mean, I, I do dig when people put that kind of thing on. Mm. Um, it is the medium, right? But I just wonder, again, what's it, what's it replacing and was that thing more more intriguing and more intoxicating in the past? I, I don't know what. Well, I guess it, so for me, it's about making sure you do both. Like, I don't think, so my poems wouldn't be going anywhere. Yeah. Because, I mean, maybe they'd be going on a piece of paper and I could like post them on people's doors. Yeah. I'd go, read me. Yeah. But like, they wouldn't. But yeah. like the other night I put on a gig because I'm conscious it shouldn't just be digital. Let's, put, let's listen to these words. We, ca we have the benefit of being able to get together in a room, so let's have a couple of, wasn't just me, it was two of the poets that I asked with very different voices to my own. And let's get in a room and, and say them <laughs> and see what happens then. And that, that is very different from being in your room and posting and yeah. having it a like or whatever. Yeah. How about um, with, the, with you, like, in terms of vulnerability on that tangent, like, yeah. how did it feel? <clears throat> For you, being nude and in public and all that? It wasn't so much, well, I suppose the show's in public, but it's not, it's not me, it's mm. this copy or rendition where you can't quite even tell it's me. Oh, so it's not you physically, but it no, is you. No, so it's me, it's it, was a, you. it was a photo turned into a, into a model mm. that then is incorporated in this sculpture. Um, so I been? was naked in a man's garage mm -hmm. with a couple of other naked people. Which was fine, which I suppose you, you're, I suppose a, a prop, you can remove yourself and naked body from the, from the situation. Um, and then when you're in the gallery, if you're looking at a model of yourself naked, you know it's not you. Has it got your head attached? Yeah. 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 But because the technology isn't so precise, it's a kind of, it's a really good rendition. Oh. But you're this big. Wow. Um, and because there's so much going on and you're in a gallery space, which I think people, if it was just alone in a room, but there's so much going on in a gallery and there's other people and you've got to understand that the person looking at it isn't so concerned with the individual, they're concerned with the artwork as a whole. Mm. I don't look at the, these faces and think, who is that? And are they worried about having their faces rendered? I'm thinking of the artwork as a whole. Yeah. 
which is kind of similar. Well, it becomes something else, doesn't it? It is, yeah. And because it's someone else's artwork, I feel kind of far removed. From, yeah. I feel a part of it, but just because it's my physical being, it's not my ideas, which I think are far more uh, important. So it's his, it's mm. his beast, rather mm -hmm. than in your case, it's your mind and your being that's yeah. on performance. Yeah, and then that's, I think, just really made me think of something else, but that's the difference between, I find, and I'm still working that out, mm. is um, when I'm doing poetry, it's the same as when I used to be in bands, I, used to, I find that kind of a bit more like, what's my character? Do I have, because like, yeah, I don't necessarily want to be Hester or Hetty. Right. Like, yeah. that's, that's my, that's me. You know, mm. that's just my kind of, that's my character. That's my personality. Whereas that's, I think that's why I loved and trained in acting initially, because I loved, I love becoming a character. Right. And you can kind of, it's the same, it's behind a facade. It's mm. behind, you still completely embody something. But it's like you say, you're kind of removed mm. because it's a piece of work. Well, it's given to as well, right? I mean, unless you're producing, directing and doing your own thing as an act, uh, someone else is <laughs> giving you a facade, which is in your own life, you're giving yourself your facade and your mask, which is really difficult. Oh, yeah. 